I want to talk about body standards and specifically male body standards because, you know, I don't want to speak for any women. I know it's a totally different ball game um, with beauty standards, but I'm talking about men because um, I've been thinking about, you know, all the stuff that I've covered on this channel and I feel like the one that would be most relevant, most uh, close to home is probably your body, right? Because I think everyone at a certain point has had insecurities about maybe want to have some more muscle, be a little bit taller, all that. When I started working out, I was, um, so I'm, well, context, I'm six foot tall, right? And when I started working out, I was 125 pounds. So that is skinny, dude. I was a skinny thing. And so that was the summer before college, so four years ago. And, you know, being in college, you've got the dining hall. So I was just eating a ton of food, working out six days a week. And, and I mean, it worked, dude. I put on, um, I'm like 160 now, so I put on like 35 pounds. And the reason I tell you that is because I am probably one of the least optimized people you will meet when it comes to like what I do for working out. Like I never track my calories. I never track my meals um, or never track the weight. Like some people are like, I want to know that I did five pounds more this week. I never do that. And to be clear, that's pretty bad. Like, could I have put on more than 35 pounds of muscle in four years if I was more disciplined? Absolutely. But, you know, <laughs> I was lazy. But even just doing the bare minimum, it was extremely transformative. And, and I think about how, you know, given that I'm just a normal guy, I'm not a fitness influencer, I'm not a uh, model or anything. Um, I think about how lots of guys compare themselves to to that. They compare themselves to influencers or, or athletes, right? And and I think a lot about um, Chris Bumstead, right? He, if you don't know who he is, he is the number one bodybuilder in the world pretty much right now. He's, uh, he's won the Mr. Olympia like four times, which is like the highest accolade. And for good reason. He is like the ultimate bodybuilding athlete. He's got the best genetics. He's he's super like he's six foot two, two thirty, two forty on stage. Like he's a he's massive, right? And while I think it's very impressive and and very admirable what Chris has been able to do with his body, I find it really sad when people think that that is what they have to do. And they have to go through that as well. And I mean, that's normal. Like, who wouldn't want to be super tall, super jacked? But I don't think people really consider the sacrifices that people go through to do that, you know? Like Chris, he's probably working out three, four hours a day, ice baths, um, you know, the meal prep stacked to the top of the fridge, super disciplined schedule, all that. And most people just don't want to deal with that. Most people want to be able to eat out to enjoy Thanksgiving with their family, you know, without worrying about like, oh, am I going to hit my macros? And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. You know, if you want to compete, by all means, do it. But I don't think it's in everyone's interest to do that. Most people never will step on stage. Most people will never want to be a fitness influencer. But then they still play this comparison game of like, well, why don't I look like them? You know, when it's a totally different game, like Chris, He's doing this as his job. He makes money from his body. And like me, I go to work. Or maybe you go to school. You have a family to look after. We don't have the same schedule to do that, you know? Like, why would you be surprised that you don't also have the body of someone who has a completely different mindset, completely different lifestyle and schedule than you do, you know? Like, I think about, um, this isn't really body standards, but I think about how there's like football players or soccer, right? And, you know, you've got like the 16, 17, 18 year old kid. He wants to be a professional soccer player. So he's out there on the field, on the pitch, just trying to kick goals, right? Or work on his passing game. And, you know, he just keeps missing the goals. He's, he's not really playing very well. And he's like, man, why can't I just be like Ronaldo? Why can't I just be like Messi or something? <laughs> and I mean, it seems obvious, doesn't it? But it's like, this is someone who is 16, 17, 18, comparing themselves to like a 35 year old super athlete, someone that is like the elite of the elite. And like to compare yourself to someone who has such a head start on you or is just like that much better is, I don't know, man. I mean, it's just incredible. And, and I mean, you know, not everyone expects to be that good. I, I know that, but there are definitely some kids out there that are like, 
I just want to be good now. I want to be the best now. When this takes time, dude. And that's not to say that you can never become that level of skill. But, like, if you're going to compare yourself to someone like Messi and you're a soccer player, at least compare yourself to 18-year-old Messi when you're the same age. Because, you know, it'd be like if you're running a marathon and someone got, like, a two-hour head start on you. Like, why are they already... Like, why am I losing? You know, it's like, cause they have had such a head start on you. And, and I get, and it saddens me because lots of people, they look at this kind of comparison and then they just quit because they haven't seen the results yet. Or they're not yet at that level of super athlete when it's not going to happen that quickly at all. And especially in the realm of, of body standards, because it just takes time to put on muscle. But I wanted to segue a bit into another huge aspect of body standards, and that is genetics, right? And, and a huge insecurity for a lot of guys is height, right? And how, you know, your height is genetically determined. And if you're born 5'6 as a man, well, you know, you're screwed, right? That's what a lot of guys think, right? And, I mean, I know it's easy for me to say because, like I said, I'm six foot tall. So, like, of course, I, it's easy for me to be like, just be happy with your height. But I think about uh, these recent videos I've seen of guys voluntarily doing leg lengthening surgery where they go to a doctor and they say, hey, can you break my thigh bone or my shin or whatever and insert metal rods in my leg so that I'm taller? And I mean, there's obviously some things wrong with that. I mean, for one, you are now, uh, you have a disproportionate leg because you know your body was born to have legs of a certain length. So if your leg is now four inches longer, you're gonna look like a Frankenstein goofball, you know? And then you've also now crippled yourself for a while. You can't walk on broken legs, so so that's pretty unhealthy. And then most people are just gonna look at you like, dude, this is just sad that the insecurity was so strong that you felt the need to permanently alter your body for probably the worse. And I mean, I don't think this is like an epidemic. I don't think that people are just out there left, right, and center getting leg lengthening surgery, but it's still sad to see that some people feel the need to do that, that it's necessary to do that to feel good in their own body. Um, and I think about like actors that are that are short, right? Like uh, Joe Pesci. He's a very famous um, like mobster actor. He's in a lot of mobster movies. And, you know, he's not tall at all. He's probably like 5'5 five, five or something. But he's like just, he oozes charisma. He's so funny. He's so confident on screen. And I mean, you know, he's an actor. He's been doing this for decades. So like, of course, he's built up his confidence, but he's just always, you know, exuded like my height doesn't matter. I'm going to still be a charismatic person. And I know it's easy, easier said than done. But, you know, it's it's just admirable when I see people that did not let their genetics stop them. Right. They didn't let the fact that they maybe weren't as tall as they wanted to be or they're a little bit heavier than they want to be. And they're like, you know what, I'm just going to own it. And I mean, that shouldn't be a crutch because a lot of people will also be blaming their, their weight on genetics and say that, like, it's healthy to be fat. That's not good either. But you know what I mean? I think we all know that, like, you need to learn to accept that you are given a certain hand in life and some things you can control and some things you can't. And, like, for me, you can't really tell because I've got sweatpants on, but... I was not genetically gifted with legs at all. You know, my my family has very skinny legs and it's always been challenging for me to put on weight there. But then like my arms or my shoulders or chest or whatever, like I always felt like that's a strength of mine. So just look at what is in your life and what you have that is a strength and a weakness and, and play to that. And And don't be so upset when you're not that, you know, perfectly engineered human because no one's perfect. Like Chris Bumstead that I mentioned earlier, he's probably got things that he is unhappy about with his body and things that he wished were a little bit different or, you know, you wish you were a little bit taller, a little bit more muscular, all that. It's just a futile game, man. Body dysmorphia is a very real thing. And the moment that you learn to accept that your body is the way it is, you know, the easier I think you will be at peace with yourself. And I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm uh, 160, six foot tall. It'd be great if I was 180 pounds at six foot tall. And I mean, I can definitely control that. I can just eat more food, but like I just feel good in my own body. And I think ultimately that's what everyone wants. They just want to feel happy.
and and not mocked. They don't want to feel ridiculed. But ultimately, you know, I mean, it's great to be complimented, but you have to feel good in your own skin. You know, how can you expect to to have other people like you when you don't even like yourself? I know, and I mean, I know that's uh, edging on uh, a little cheesy philosophy, but it's true, man. If you are unhappy with your own body, look at what I did. And um, like I said, it was pretty, pretty not not minimal effort, but definitely like under optimized. And you don't have to be perfect when you start. And and just the smallest bit of effort is better than nothing than just failing outright and not even trying. So um, I hope that was helpful. And yeah, I'll catch you later.